Greetings and welcome to our worship. It's great to have you with us. As we move into the middle of February, the polar vortex has us in its grip. So please be safe, take care, make sure you stay warm as the temperatures are very frigid, at least here in West Salem. They'll be warming up later in the week, but take care right now, please. Um, we're also still in the midst of the pandemic. Please continue to do those things that keep you and others safe. Wear your mask and get the vaccine. But remember, even after you are vaccinated, you need to keep wearing the mask. And the reason you need to do that is even though you might be safe, you might be a carrier of the virus and that would put others at risk. You know, I've been teaching uh, fifth, uh, my seventh and eighth graders, we've been teaching the Ten Commandments. And one of the commandments we're going to be getting to in a few weeks is the fifth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. That commandment has everything to do with why we wear masks. You see, Martin Luther said the commandment is more than just don't kill a body, don't end a life. Luther says we fulfill that commandment, we keep it, when we not only not kill someone, but also when we help protect others. And that's exactly what we do when we wear the mask. So even though you may have get the vaccine and you're nice and safe, you don't want to put others at risk. And you do want to keep the commandment, don't you? Especially that one. So make sure you continue to wear your mask. So we get to February 13th and 14th, and it's Happy Valentine's Day to you all. But even more importantly for us as disciples of Jesus, it is the Festival of the Transfiguration. And here at Our Saviors, we have always celebrated that as the celebration of hope. Because as we come to the end of Epiphany and we look ahead to Lent, we know that there is hope in both the, cru in the crucified and in the risen Jesus. Unfortunately, we can't have the band here today. We can't do the party that we usually have. We can't be rocking like we usually do. But we do look, we do look forward with confidence in the hope that God provides us in the crucified and risen Jesus. As we move into this week, we do begin the season of Lent on Wednesday, February 17th, Ash Wednesday. There will be a YouTube pre-recorded video posted late on uh, Wednesday afternoon, early evening, so please watch that and be a part of the beginning of this journey of Lent. But also, if you live in the West Salem area, we invite you to be a part of our parking lot, Ashes and Communion, on Ash Wednesday. Yes, it will be cold, but you will be nice and warm because you're gonna stay in your car. Pastor Gene and I will be shivering a little bit, but that won't be too bad. So here's what you do. Make sure you bring the elements for communion, bread and grape juice or bread and wine. Come and join us. It will be from 7.30 to 8.45 on Wednesday morning or 5.15 to 6.30 Wednesday late afternoon, early evening. And when you come, there will be a brief order, or I would guess probably less than five minutes, for ashes and scripture, prayer, and communion. And then we'll send you over to another station, and we got some things for you. We've got some gifts for you, including a little bit of tease here, a kiss of God's grace. You get a little bit of a gift. Uh, there'll be a couple other items for you. If you would like to get some script cards, our script card ministry has been kind of slow because we haven't had people in the building. Remember, script cards for Woodman's Quick Trip and Festival. Support the prophets, support either youth ministry or world hunger. So those are great causes. If you want to get some script cards, the best thing to do is call the office Monday or Tuesday or even leave a message uh, on the, on the uh, answering machine and just let us know what you want and we'll have it ready for you. And then the last thing I want to share with you about Ash Wednesday is the offer, the invitation to be a difference maker. We invite you to bring some canned, canned goods, uh, canned food item or other non-perishable food item for the food pantry because there are still a lot of hungry people. A lot of people struggling to make ends meet during these difficult days. Bring that along and you can sh drop that off along with picking up your other goodies and, and make Ash Wednesday a memorable day. So thank you for joining us. Uh, as we worship again, it is the Festival of the Transfiguration. And then we begin to make the move to the season of Lent. Come, let us worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Please join me in confessing our sin, but also in trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Mark 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up on a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. 
This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. the judge and others and instead of his face being on the screen there was a picture of a white cat and whenever the lawyer spoke the cat's mouth moved exactly with the words he was speaking not exactly the professional persona the lawyer was trying to present not exactly the picture that would impress the judge and others well it did make an impression but the moral of the story, make sure if you're going to use someone else's computer or use one of those high-tech backgrounds that transfigures your own smiling face, be sure you know what it is first. 
Last spring, when we were beginning to get into the rhythm of our new norm for worship, creating and posting the videos, a member of the congregation asked Pastor John when we were leaving. Leaving where? Why would anyone think we would be leaving this place? Was someone mad at us? Had we offended someone? Was someone trying to get rid of us? Did this person know something that we didn't? The person then went on to say, he just figured we would be leaving because we have been transformed into tele-evangelists. Well, not exactly transformed, but maybe transfigured. You see, there is a difference between being transformed and being transfigured. As much as we tend to use the terms interchangeably, there is a difference. To be transfigured is to be changed in outward form or appearance. To be transformed is to mean a complete or essential change in composition or structure. The lawyer in the video wasn't changed on the inside. It was just his outward appearance that was changed. And we as pastors have not been changed on the inside. We are, who we are hasn't been changed, just the outward appearance of where we show up. Today is Transfiguration Day. Jesus goes up to the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and there on that mountain, he is changed. Right before their eyes, Jesus' clothes become dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And he appears in the presence of Moses and Elijah. The change in Jesus does not alter who he is, he has not been changed inwardly. He has not been transformed, but rather transfigured. The change in Jesus gives a new understanding to those who saw him outwardly in a different light as he stands in the company of Israel's greatest prophets. Jesus may have been transfigured for the moment up on that mountain, but what happened to Peter, James, and John? Could they have been transformed? Did something inside of them change as they watched Jesus? As they went from being in the presence of Moses and Elijah back to being only with Jesus? As they heard the voice in the cloud proclaiming, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. How could they not have been changed and changed for a lifetime? They were changed so deeply, they wanted to stay in the moment, to stay in the glory, to make that place their new reality. Of all of them, Jesus was the one who could have stayed there, who should have stayed there, and yet it was Jesus who directed them, who led them back down from the mountain. And what did they find when they got down? The glory was gone. And in its place was the mundane nature of everyday life. In its place was misunderstanding, squabbling, disbelief, religious and political quarrels, jealousies and rivalries of small and huge proportions that color relationships, poverty, and pain. Sound familiar? They came down from the mountain to find life. Life not only in that time, but life as we know it in our time. As we live our lives as Christians, deep down we think we need to be like Jesus, and the thought of that is pretty overwhelming. How do we think we can achieve that? How can we possibly live a perfect life? Our lives are anything but perfect. Our lives are broken, filled with grief, despair, conflict, and hardship. Our lives are not anything like Jesus. And yet, it is precisely in that brokenness that we find Jesus. Jesus came down from the mountain to meet us 
where we are. And that's just it. Jesus came down from the mountain. It isn't about us going up. Jesus came down. All the way down into our brokenness, fear, disappointment, and loss. Jesus, the Word made flesh, who dwells among us, embraced all that is hard and difficult in our lives, and he will take all of that to the cross. To the cross where he will find victory over death so that we might live in hope, knowing that wherever we may go, Christ has already been there. And where Christ is now, we will find ourselves one day. As we go out into our world, in the shadow of the mountain, like those early disciples, we are surrounded by uncertainty, pain, turmoil, and conflict. Take a moment to pause and think about what is dark and causes you fear at this time. Not to dwell in those dark places of our lives, but in order to be reassured. As Martin Marty told Pastor John and me in the homily at our wedding, no matter what happens in our lives, in the good and in the bad, in the joy and in the sorrow, in the darkness and in the light, Jesus is already there, waiting for us. Jesus is not afraid of what is difficult in our lives. Jesus will not reject us because of our failings. Jesus came down the mountain to be with us and for us through death into new life. Like Peter, James, and John, we are called by God to listen to his Son, the Beloved. We are called not to stay up on the mountain where the air is pure and the view is stunning. We are called to come down and follow the way and the one who leads us to the cross. Today, in the rhythm of the liturgical calendar, we begin that journey with the transfigured Jesus to Good Friday and to Easter. But not just today. Every day, as we live out our baptism, as we walk as faithful disciples, we re-begin that journey with Jesus to the cross and to new life. Amen. Story. 
concerns that we want to share. Um, of course, we want to continue to keep those who struggle with COVID in our prayers, their families in this congregation, in this community, around the world who are wrestling with the disease, but also with the impact of the disease, um, livelihoods that are wiped out, difficult to pay bills, to pay the, the, to pay the rent, to get the groceries, and then people who are lonely, who are, are continue to wrestle with being disconnected from family and, and others. And then all the, the healthcare system that continues to be very taxed and overwhelmed, uh, that is getting very weary, please keep all of those folk in your prayers. Specifically, we have some prayer concerns. We want to keep Jane Paisley in our prayers as she recovers from a broken wrist and finger following surgery. Uh, Wilbur Johnson will be having hip replacement surgery this week. Uh, Tom Niemeyer has a medical procedure also coming up this week. Please keep them in your prayers as they seek healing. And then we want to pray for Larry and Cindy Olson on the death of Larry's sister, Ellen, in um, Rockford, Illinois. Uh, very tragic death, very sudden death. Please keep the Larson family in your prayers as they grieve uh, Ellen's loss. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. For all of creation, for the land around us that now rests awaiting the coming of spring, and for the lands across the globe currently basking in the gift of summer, for spaces that have been polluted in need of restoration, for all who plant, harvest, and steward the land. May your Holy Spirit breathe hope and life and renew the future of all creation. Let us pray. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders, healthcare workers, law enforcement and social workers, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world. Let us pray. For all who suffer this day, for Tom, Jane, Wilbur, and especially for those who deal with COVID and its effects, that Christ, our healer, transformed sickness into health, loneliness into compassion, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace, and that a good and gracious God continue to strengthen all those who seek to meet the needs of those who suffer. Let us pray. For our companions on life's journey who, because of COVID, we are not yet able to be with. And for strength, confidence, and patience as we await the day when we can gather again, let us pray. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, especially for Ellen, who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. And for those who grieve their loss, 
that surrounded by your gifts of life, they have comfort and courage even in difficult days. Let us pray. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you. 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 I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those who are in the room with you. And if you are watching by yourself, know that God's peace transcends the distance between us. Thank you again for your generous support of the work of this congregation, the work that we do together, the work that we do to, to be a mission outpost in the midst of a difficult world and to make a difference in the lives of people around us. Thank you for your support. And on the screen, you can see our webpage for our electronic giving. There are several options for electronic gifts. They work well. Use them with confidence. A lot of people have. And if you'd rather write the check and mail it into us, hey, it doesn't make any difference to us. We just appreciate your support, your generosity, and we thank you. We thank you for being partners with us as we seek to make a difference in the lives of people around us. And if you're a member of another congregation tuning us in, welcome to our worship. You are always welcome to our worship. We love to have you with us, but you know what? Support your congregation. They're doing the work of Jesus too, and, and your support of, of the ministry that they are carrying out, that you carry out with them, that makes a difference in the world too. So support your congregation. You know, you heard the sharing of the piece a few moments ago, some of the seventh grade boys. Um, teaser alert, you'll get, the, you'll get the girls next week. So some of the boys who shared the piece with you, um, good kids. You know, our, and, I, and last week, I think we had the, the sixth graders who were on last week. Um, our confirmation ministry is an important part of our ministry, and I talked a little bit about that last week. But I came across something today that I wanted to share with you, just earlier, in fact, this very day. Uh, I asked my kids, my confirmation kids, to fill out worship notes. You know, they watch a worship service or they attend a worship service. And one of the questions I asked them was, is there anything you found really interesting? And sometimes I get, no, 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 that's okay. But then sometimes they get really fascinating answers. I mean, one girl said, said um, what did she say? She said, I thought it was interesting you talked about being generous because we talked about that in school the other day. And she was drawing a connection with what's happening elsewhere in her life to what we talk about in a faith community. And I thought that was really pretty cool. And then I came across another one. Um, and, I, and I admit, I'm going through some old ones right now. This is from back in, in November. Um, we had had several of our adults sharing some things on the video. And this girl said, she said, I was really touched by what Carolyn said because obviously it was, it was very deep and it was very important to her. And I thought about that, <clears throat> that part of our ministry, which you make happen, is we help, you know, teach kids. But part of it is we connect people. And so we connected this, this girl, this, I think it was an eighth grade girl who, who responded this, to the words of an older adult and they did that in the context of worship that we can do because you are supporting us. But she is attending a confirmation class, which we're doing because you are supporting us. And we've got Carolyn over here, who is a part of this community and has a community to belong to because you are supporting us. And all of a sudden, the connections come together. 
or even with a girl who, who understood that what we talked about as being generous is what they were also talking about in school, the connections that are being made because of you and the difference that that is making in the lives of these young people, maybe in Carolyn's life too. You are making a difference in the lives of people as you share generously and allow the ministry to happen. And so thank you for your support. Thank you for your continued generosity. And thank you for your partnership as we seek to be the people of God together. Let's move on with our worship. Part of the tradition of the festival of the transfiguration or the celebration of hope is the burying of the Alleluias, the taking down of the Alleluia banners, placing them into a chest and burying them for the season of Lent, and then not using that word until we get to the glory and the wonder of Easter morning. We do that because even though we want to be happy, we want to be joyful, we recognize that sometimes there are moments when we need to be a little more somber and reserved. I remember as a child attending my, my grandfather's funeral, and then as an older young adult attending my grandmother's funeral. And, you know, it is a moment that is full of love, but also very somber and reflective. It just isn't appropriate to go into a funeral home doing high fives. That just doesn't work. There are times when we need to be more reserved. And the season of Lent is one of those. For as we enter into the season of Lent, we have our eyes fixed on our, on our goal. And the goal is the death of Jesus. 
And so we're going to uh, take down the Alleluia banners. We're going to bury the Alleluias. We won't use them for the next month and a half until we get to Easter. In this congregation, we bury the Alleluias with our kids. We bring the kids up front, and we, 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 we do it with them. And um, they're not here today. They're not with us here. But maybe, maybe they would let us join them in the children's message. Because I think they might be talking about that in the children's message. Come on, let's join the children's message for this week for a few minutes. Okay, we're back, and I've got, I've got the kids here, and I see a whole bunch of other folk of all ages, some, some little kids, and I see some really people old like me. Okay, we're all gathered here together, the people from the YouTube worship and the people from the children's message, so that we can together bury the Alleluias. But you know what? We need our box. Pastor Gene, would you help me bring the box out? Let's get our box out here, and we'll get the cover covers in the sacristy there. We'll bring our box out. I'm going to put it right there for the moment. And that'll be our box um, for the Alleluia. Now, here's how we do this. Uh, in normal time, we all we go marching around the church. We're not going to do that. But we are going to sing. We are going to sing. And, and we have a song we sometimes use. It's a song I love. I'm going to sing it through once so you can all kind of get the feel for it. And then as Pastor Gene and I take down the Alleluia banners, I'll keep singing it as best I can. And you keep joining me as best as you can, okay? The song goes like this. Allelu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Allelu, 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 alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord, alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Got it? Okay. So, Pastor Dean's ready. I'm going to start singing. You join me and we're going to take the banners down. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Again. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Hey, thanks for having you all together. Let's go back, okay? Thanks for joining with the kids as we buried the Alleluias. We did our Alleluia, praise you the Lord, the high fives there, but now we prepare for Lent. The Alleluias are buried, and we won't hear them or see them for some time. And by the way, if you're interested in a little bit more on that, talked about it with the kids a little bit, watch the children's message. It's available on the, the website, right where you get the same, on the video page, right where the video is for our worship, so you can check that out and see the whole thing. But um, we had a lot of fun, so thanks for being a part of that. As we come to the conclusion of our worship, would you please join me in prayer? Rise up and come to our help, merciful God, for we are in need. Our spirits are weighed down with fear. Our bodies feel as fragile as the dust from which we came. All that we have trusted seems hidden from sight. The pandemic continues to rage with the end in sight, but still very far away. 
yet you have not forgotten us. We do not trust in our own power or strength, but in your steadfast love in every generation. Show us your face in this time of trial. Remind us of your faithfulness. Save us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then send us forth to proclaim your hope to the world, even in this time of brokenness. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you. Keep you in his peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>